Hello, ladies and gentlemen, tis I, Michael A. Grimm, a.k.a. The Multivoice. I have many voices, but one opinion. And today, I got a good review for you today. And I hope some of you have uh, enjoyed my uh, multi-voice-oween that I've done for Halloween. And, of course, that, um, that multi-voice, um... Grim Scary Tales. I never thought that, I mean... I mean, it's been like eight years since I did that those uh, Grim Scary Tales. And I just didn't thought after rounding all 31 stories together that um, it took like four hours to play every single one of them. Eh. And, um, and of course, for those of you who are wondering why on the thumbnail I'm dressing up like a human pumpkin, that's exactly the costume I was going for. I was making myself look like Jack O' Lantern, the spirit of Halloween. And I wore that costume like years and years ago. So I just sort of liked that costume so much that I just wanted to show that picture as a thumbnail to my multi-voice, I mean, multi-voice storyteller Grim Scary Tales. Now... I know some of you might be thinking, am I going to be doing some more of those scary stories and such? Well, those were my last, and I never look back on thinking about going back on my grim scary tales. But uh, maybe if I find some more uh, Halloween stories, some more urban legends or something, I'll probably do more, but who knows. But right now, one thing it kind of got my attention. Ever since I reviewed... Agatha Christie's Mirror Crack, and I knew I said Window Crack so many times, it's Mirror Cracked. I did my uh, Columbo impression. Be like, eh, excuse me. Gee, I hate to bother you. Uh, has anyone seen my dog, Little Basher Hound? He sits around and draws all day. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, want me to review about myself? <laughs> so... Ever since I did my uh, Columbo impression on my uh, window crack, I got a comment from one of the uh, watchers who watched my review saying that they love my Columbo review. So, therefore, I decided to review Columbo. Some of you people wanted it, you got it. So, one thing I'm going to be doing... This is water. One one thing I'm going to be starting off is a little history. Long ago, two writers who always wrote a lot of murder mysteries, and they wrote a really good story, and they had it appeared as this that anthology series called The Chevy mystery show and they did one episode in 1960 called enough rope now this one doesn't have peter falk in it but it did had i mean this one showed the first guy who played colombo before peter falk which is bert freed who played colombo now bert freed did a good job playing colombo but uh, he was more I mean, he, he was no Peter Falk, but he was all right. And they liked the story so much that they changed the title from Enough Rope to Prescription Murder. And they, in 1962, they made a stage play of Prescription Murder. And then, it, and they also had another actor who played Columbo and not uh, Peter Falk, which is Joseph Cotton. Joseph Cotton played Columbo. And then, that's when they decided to make it into a TV movie based on their stage play, which it is Prescription Murder, and it's also sort of a pilot to Columbo. And before they had Peter Falk, they had... They were thinking about having Bing Crosby. Yeah, that's right. Bing Crosby. 
the one who did that, The uh, Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which I did a uh, multi-voice riff, and also is the one who sung, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. It must have been a beautiful baby. Bo -bo 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 the king of crooner himself, Bing Crosby. They wanted him to play Columbo? Well, it wouldn't be like Peter Falk. I mean, imagine an alternate universe where Bing Crosby did took the part, and he'll be like this. Oh, uh, one more thing. I got something to say to you. My name is Lieutenant Columbo from the Metropolitan Cr Police. If anyone see my dog, little Basil Hound. That's exactly what he would sound like if he was Columbo. But, but when they made the movie of Prescription Murder in 1968, they had Peter Falk. And Peter Falk was an icon. I mean, he started his performance as Columbo in this uh, Prescription Murder. And then after that... Now, Peter Falk was no was not from. I mean, it wasn't his first rodeo playing a detective who solves a mystery. I mean, he uh, played uh, detectives before in comedies. I mean, I remember him in Murder by Death, where he's a parody of um, Humphrey Bogart, Harborough detective, like Sam Spade, um, Richard Diamond, Philip Marlowe, and they even made another movie starring Peter Falk, who is doing the same thing, except it focuses more on him, called The Chief Detective. Now, Murder by Death was a comedy mystery, and it was a parody to all the famous uh, detectives in television and books. And The Chief Detective was a parody to the Humphrey Bogart hardball murder mysteries. And even also referencing um, Casablanca. Ash yeah, looking at you, kid. This is what dreams are really made of. My school is the streets. I'm looking down a barrel with a point of revolver. It's my teacher. I always love Humphrey Bogart in the horrible detective mysteries. I mean, I always enjoyed Maltese Falcon. It's just too bad I haven't watched all the other ones, like The Big Sleep or any of the other horrible detective movies where he played Richard Diamond or Philip Marlowe. But anyway... In 1971, that's where his uh, character of Columbo all of a sudden started to bloom when they kept on doing a series called Columbo. Now, most TV shows, they always do it like a um, once-a-week series or once-a-day series, but Columbo, they always do their films like once a month. Now, the series only lasted for like in 1971 to 1978. And of course, uh, there were like few episodes in each season. I mean, the first season had like seven episodes. The second season has like eight episodes. The, uh, the third season had uh, eight episodes. The fourth season had like uh, six episodes. The fifth season had six episodes. The sixth season have three episodes, and then the seventh season had five episodes. And then they decided to make TV movies about Columbo, and they just pick up where, where the seventh season left off back in 1989, where, they, where the eighth season had five episodes, and then in 1990, they made the ninth, ninth season with five episodes. And then in, still in 1990, they did the tenth season with three episodes. And then in 1991, two episodes on the eleventh season. 1992, 12, season 12, four episodes. 1995, 13th season, only one episode. And then 19... 97, 1997, 14th season, one episode, and then in 1998, 
fifteenth season, two episodes, and then in two thousand and three, the final season and the final episode only made one episode in season sixteen. Now, Peter Falk wanted to. Um, oh yeah, now. Before they kept doing all those seasons, after they were done with uh, season seven, in 1979 they decided to do a spinoff. They decided to do a spinoff of Columbo called Mrs. Columbo, starring uh, Kate Mugro. Now, sadly that season only lasted for like one season because it just didn't have the same appeal like Peter Falk I mean I mean um Kate never did go like uh oh uh one more thing uh, excuse me I hate to bother you I mean she was nothing like Peter Falk and of course they even made up a story saying that she was divorced she divorced her husband and kept her daughter and also the car which is the same beaten up car that Columbo always drive, and of course always brings that dog of his, that uh, that Basset Hound, who which he just calls him Dog. He doesn't give him a name, he just calls him Dog. But he chases around and drools all day. <laughs> and you know, one thing I gotta say about um, Kate Mogro, I mean, at least she started in something, but her as a spinoff to Columbo? No. But I do have one thing to say. Remember when I uh, did my uh, um, Mirror Cracked review and I complained about uh, having Jennifer Gardner playing Miss Marple? If Disney decided to uh, make a Miss Marple movie, they're going to have Jennifer Gardner to play uh, Miss Marple? I said no because she ain't old enough. Well, one actress I think she'll be should be old enough to play uh, Miss Marple, Kate herself. I'm not kidding. I mean, if Disney wants to continue on making that Miss Marple movie, I think uh, Kate Margro will be perfect to play Miss Marple. I mean, hell, Miss Marple is supposed to be uh, British. And I've seen Kate in uh, Orange is the New Black, and she talks with a Russian accent. So I think she can pull off a British accent and just play um, a British humble old lady who gets herself involved in murder mysteries and always solves a case. Oh yeah, and that was one thing about murder mysteries. I mean, I'm always used to watching uh, the Who Done It kind of murder mysteries. But Columbo, on the other hand, is a totally different type of murder mystery. Unlike you trying to figure out who the murderer is, you already see who the murderer is, but the question is, who's going to capture them? And of course, they didn't make it make the, the murderer turn out to be just, you know, a sinister mur murderer who just kills just for the pleasure and all that. No. They had a m reason why they committed the murder. Either they're being blackmailed, or being threatened, or being pushed around, or just got intimidated by somebody and they just couldn't take it anymore. So they made the killers more of a sympathetic characters who gets pushed around. And one thing about Columbo, I mean, in every single murder mystery series, every detective always figures out who the murderer is and I mean, it's pretty obvious. Every single murder mystery, every single detective know who the murderer is, always gives them the glare, give them the look like, I know what you did, and I will prove it. But Columbo, on the other hand, he's more like, I know what you did, but I don't prove it. But let me ask you something. I'm a big fan of your work. Uh, can I get your autograph? You see, he acts like a friend towards them. I mean, he's, he's sympathetic enough to be friendly towards the killers on a certain extent until he finally reveals that he knew that they did it. And what he does is he wait for the right moment until the killers slip up and finally revealed what they did. And that's what Columbo does. I mean, and he's really damn good at it. 
He always figures out a way to let killers slip up and give them a reason to arrest them. I mean, compared to all the detectives, I mean, I've watched a lot of uh, murder mystery detectives, crime solvers, especially uh, Sherlock Holmes. I mean, what can you compare between Columbo and Sherlock Holmes? Well, Sherlock Holmes always wear Victorian outfits. I mean, he wears, like, sometimes a tuxedo or a snazzy Victorian suit. And, of course, everybody remembers his uh, deerstalker hat and trench coat, which becomes, like, a symbol, an icon look of Sherlock Holmes. While, while Columbo, he just wears a wrinkled-up trench coat. Sometimes looks like he hardly shaves. His hair is all messed up. And some people can mistake him as a homeless person. Sherlock Holmes, he speaks perfect, posh, British accent. Columbo, he's more down-to-earth with his New York, Italian, American accent. I mean, he always sounds like this. I mean, oh, uh, just one more thing. You got a match? Uh, you got a lighter? So, what do you got? And, um, also, Sherlock Holmes always smokes a pipe. Columbo smokes cigars. And they're cheap cigars. I mean, and even though he always talks about his wife telling him that he needs to quit or something like that, but he always smokes those cheap cigars everywhere he goes. And, um... I mean... And one thing about Columbo, he acts like an idiot, a buffoon, but he only does that to those that he knows that they are the murderer. And that's what he does. And even sometimes he will annoy the hell out of them until he finally gets them to confess. And that's what he's good at. I mean, compared to Sherlock Holmes, I mean... Sherlock Holmes, he's a little anal retentive. I mean, he always trying to make things perfect in order to get the murder solved and such. Columbo, he just goes with the flow and just solves the murder his own way. So if he uh, crosses over with Jessica Fletcher, if they did a crossover between just murder she wrote and Columbo. Jessica Fletcher would probably would not tolerate Columbo's behavior, but she starts to see how observant he is and just goes along with him. While at the same time, he would let her solve the mystery herself as well. And, uh, of course, uh, a lot of people say that, um, that uh, Hercule Poirot he is anal retentive and it's sort of compared to a certain anal retentive detective that everybody knows now, Monk who is a hypochondriac he has an obsessive compulsive disorder but he's a brilliant detective but he gets kind of annoying over trying to make things clean and perfect and make everything looks right and of course he always an annoy the hell out of people but that's what he does. And of course, every time when he's trying to adjust things, he said, Here, let me adjust it. You'll thank me later. But of course, nobody does. They don't thank him. And he also stupidly did that one thing where he kind of mixed between the caffeine and the decaf coffee because they looked uneven. So he made it even, but somebody kept telling him, Yeah, but you mixed the decaf with the caffeine. But it's even. Yeah, but decaf and caffeine mix. I mean, he just didn't see the point. But anyway, back to to Columbo. Now, after uh, 2003, when the final season ended, they were planning to bring back Columbo one more time, and Peter Falk was about ready to do it. But uh, 
sadly, Peter Falk died of dementia and even passed away in 2011. And it was a big loss to have one of our icon actors who played the most unforgettable and most beloved detective in history who passed away. But before he passed away, he did write a book, an autobiography about his life called Just One More Thing, where he talks about his life playing Columbo and what he went through. And even he even puts in a couple of funny things because that's one thing that Columbo has that all the other mystery solver murder mystery series didn't have. Humor. Because Columbo, I mean, he's kind of funny in his own way. And this is my review of Columbo of the day. And if for those of you who enjoyed my uh, Columbo, please leave a comment down below. Hit like and subscribe. And this is multi-voice. Oh, just one more thing. Get ready for more reviews because I got some more things to talk about and maybe some Halloween theme because even though Halloween is over, I still feel like I want to review a couple of Halloween theme stuff along the way. So stay tuned for that. So this is Michael A. Graham, a.k.a. Multi-Voice Reviewer, telling you all I remember so I can jog your memory. Oh, just one more thing.